And again, he's got options like the Rotom Wash, which you haven't really seen throughout this tournament so far. Another a Pokemon mm. that I'm, I'm hoping that we do get to see glimpses of in this match. Yeah, we've only really seen Rotom Heat so far, so it's good to be able to showcase some Rotom Wash. So let's jump into game one and see if some of the top picks that Lee and I have set our sights on are going to be able to jump out into this match. Chewy is leading out with that Rotom to our delight, paired up with the Dragapult. Whereas on the opposing side of the field for Gabrielle, there is Colossal Inertia Fu, and this looks like a very classic setup combination, Lee. Yeah, you're going to see potentially an Aqua Jet here into the Colossal, activate that Steam Engine, activate the Weakness Policy, and then the Colossal, GMAX Colossal, is set to uh, get going on in this game and make it very difficult for Chewie straight off the bat. But the thing is, Chewie has some nice options here. Obviously, got the Rotom Wash, could decide to Dynamax that, and he could throw in a big uh, Max Voltex, or Max Geyser, sorry, um, into that that uh, GMAX Colossal slot, which will be a big, big threat for um, Gabriel to kind of keep in mind going into this first turn. That's the thing, if you are Gabriel Legati and want to set up your Colossal, if you're Chewy then you have to commit to that Rotom, you have to maybe try and make sure that it's going to hit with a water type move or maybe risk something like a Hydra Pump miss. So it depends if Gabriel is going to be brave and maybe see if they can knock Chewy down into a situation here. But Chewy's actually going to Dynamax up the Dragapult on this occasion. So we'll to apply some pressure using um, that particular Pokemon. And on Gabrielle's side, no surprises, Lee, we're gonna be able to see a Gigantamax Colossal come into the fray. And I wonder if this is gonna be a direct, bold setup with using something like the Aqua Jet. Other than the Rotom, there isn't really um, that sort of that much threat coming down to the Colossal. If it can get its activations up, it's gonna look formidable. Going into that next turn as well by having the speed advantage against a Pokemon like the Dragapult. You can see it happening though here. The Aqua Jet has connected. There is no sun in the sky or anything though, so it does deal a considerable amount of damage. That's something that Gabriel has to have in his calculations when maybe having to take an attack. And it's able to go for the G-Max Volcalith here. Connecting down onto the opposing Rotom here deals a huge chunk of damage. And of course, we'll be able to set up the rocks as well for those residual effects starting to ship away at the end of every turn. Yeah, but the Rotom here is showing it being trained extremely well, being mm. able to take that attack very well. You know, even after the weakness policy uh, boost and, and then activate its own so, sort of vein of recovery here. Um, so the Rotom going to be able to get an attack off. At least the Dragapult goes for the Max Airstream, kind of helping it out with the speed control um, and, and getting ever closer to that Colossal now. And an Eerie Impulse coming out from the Rotom wash into the Colossal, really just nullifying that special attack boost that it's just received from its weakness policy, Lou. Oh, amazing to see that on Rotom. Really not a popular choice in Rotom. We often see it kind of running protect over what I think Eerie Impulse will have covered in those move slots there. So nice to see that Chewie does have an option here to kind of make Colossal a little bit less of a threat here and counteract that weakness policy boost. Of course, the speed is up on Gabrielle's side of the field, but Dragapult did go for that max airstream, doing a huge chunk of damage to the Urshifu and also critically breaking that focus sash, but boosting up the speed on Chewie's side of the field by one point each for Rotom on Dragapult. Yeah, and now the Rotom probably in range now to go down to the, the residual damage from the G-Max Volcalith. So uh, maybe Chewie wants to just keep it on the field here just to, uh, you know, if it's not targeted, then he'll be able to get at least an attack off. But we are going to see Gabriel not really want to take any risks with a potential Hydro Pump that could come out there and cause further disruption. Yeah, Dragapult going to go for the Max Phantasm here into that Urshifu, pick up the Solid KO and obviously lower the defense on Gabriel's... Um, Colossal as well. I really like that play by Gabriel though, like you said, doesn't risk a potential Hydro Pump and then if for whatever reason the Rotom did want to switch out, you would have been able to catch the Pokemon on the switch in there with the um, G-Max Volcalith as well. So a really nice play, put KOs on either side and this is where things get interesting for these players. You now get the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back, change up the ball position a little bit more and maybe try and support your Dynamax Pokemon that's on the field. Yeah, exactly. And I think like the the, the way that uh, Gabriel went after the Rotom there was just a safe play. And like you say, if you catch anything on the switch in, it's such a bonus at that point. So you know, you know, a lot of players when Pokemon are so low with the residual damage and effect, you kind of leave those alone. But uh, I think it was worthwhile not doing that this turn time around. We both see the yeah, uh, both players now opting for their restricted uh, of choosing in Series Eight and bringing in their Zacians. So we have the Zassians on the field, obviously both getting that Intrepid Sword boost and uh, both having that plus one attack, making them quite threatening, especially against Dynamax Pokemon or Gigantamax Pokemon that either either player is facing down against because that Behemoth Blade is obviously going to get that, that, that 
boost to do its attack on Dynamax Pokemon, doubling damage on Dynamax mm -hmm. Pokemon. So it's going to be able to do extremely a big amounts of damage. The Dragapult quite threatened here. It does have the Airstream in effect, so it is plus one speed. Um, but the Colossal um, mm -hmm. in, in a decent position, you know, already and can threaten the Zacian probably more than the Zacian can threaten the Dragapult. I mean, that's the thing, the Zacian's here being the supporter Pokemon and actually going for some defensive play here, not wanting to take any damage from these Dynamax Pokemon here. Colossal going for the Max Flare, of course, it's formidable with its fire typing into that opposing Zacian, even through the Protect, is able to do a decent amount of chip damage there. Zacian, because he couldn't fully protect itself, but we're going to see these Pokemon both kind of stepping on the defensive on this turn. It's really going to be all about those Dynamax Pokemon. I love this play here, going for the Max Wormwood. We know that that wouldn't be able to connect onto the Zacian due to the typing, but Critically, it was still low with the attack of that Zash and being able to counter out the Intrepid Sword boost while also getting a decent chunk of damage onto that opposing Colossal. So really well calculated by Chewie. Chewie, you can see, is really trying to think about what they want to achieve, what kind of steps and measures they want to put down onto Gabrielle's team to try and look towards that end game state. Yeah, and uh, the attack drop there is, is a nice option. You think Chewie's got two options there. He can go for the Airstream or he can go for the Wormwind, and it's probably better off if you don't have something with Intimidate in the back to get the Wormwind uh, into the Colossal. Get some nice damage onto it as well and reduce that attack boost on the opposing Zassi and making it a little bit easier to handle. But you can see already that the, the residual damage chipping away at both the uh, Chewie side of the field with those G-Max Volklith kind of making it difficult to survive attacks, even though that the Colossal Ooh. has been reduced reducing damage with the e impulse in the sun, the heat wave able to pick up mm. the knockout on the Zacian, which is pretty huge. Yeah, exactly. Being able to find its mark and do some devastation due to the sun boost. Dreepies, however, want to get in on the action. Takes the Colossal down to one HP with the second Dreepy able to come in and get the KO. Very helpful Pokemon there for the Dragapult to get the solid KO against the Colossal. But Zacian is then free to go for the Bayamoth Blade. This is going to jump up and connect down onto that opposing Dragapult. And, ooh, it looks like it is able to get the KO against it. Yeah, big, big, big turn here for Gabrielle. Being able to remove both of the Chewie's Pokemon from the field and leave him with one. And uh, Gabrielle still got the Salamence in the back to come in now. Provide some sort of Intimidate support if it wants to and just another offensive threat on whatever Chewie's got. But if you're going to have one Pokemon left, it would be the Venusaur with the Sun up. It does come in. It's going to be the fastest thing on the field, Lou, and it's going to be able to provide a lot of pressure to both the Zacian and the Salamence. Probably the Salamence a bit more threatening with the... Mm. Uh, the potential flying type attacks here um, than the Zacian. It's still going to be very difficult for the Venusaur to do it, but if you can manage to get two sleep powders onto these targets and then try and get maximum sleep turns, you've got a chance. Oh, well, it's actually going to be the Earth Power going straight down into that Zacian. Looks like it's going to be a two-hit KO, and Venusaur doing a little bit of damage with its recoil as well, thanks to its Life Orb. Bayon with Blade's going to come out from this opposing, uh, sorry, from the Zacian into the opposing Venusaur and do a huge chunk of damage, and now it's all really up to Salamence to be able to pick up the KO here and going safely for the Outrage here, knowing it's going to be able to find its mark, taking game one for Gabriel Agati. Things could have been very different there with some Sleep Powders, but... Looks like Gabriel was able to capitalize on the Earth Power and take game one. Yeah, and playing this Ashley really well in the end game there, you know. Uh, the Sleep Powder would have... Momentum rolling Lee and jump straight into game two and see how the end game's going to look up against that particular match. Very interesting choices from that Venusaur there. And we see the Dragapult and Rotom coming out from Chewie. Great to see the Rotom here out in the action once again, paired up with Urshifu and Colossal on Gabriel's side. I wonder, Lee, if we're going to see Colossal try and get its boosts up. You would imagine so, and you think, why not go for the boosts here? You went for it in game one, it worked out pretty well for you. Uh, you've got to contend with something like the Eerie Impulse, obviously, but um, that Rotom could be a little more threatening as well because it might not decide to go for the Eerie Impulse. It might this turn decide to go for the, the Dynamax and go for a Max um, <laughs> a Geyser into into the uh, Colossal, which would be very detrimental. Um, but it's it's an option for Gabriel here. Uh, you can see he is going in between options here, whether he wants to stay on the field of the Colossal if he wants to switch out. Um, but I think the, the balls and shoes field now, he doesn't need to go for the Eerie Impulse. It was a nice Nice option but it didn't really work out as well as he planned here and I think if he'd removed the Colossal a lot sooner I think the game would have maybe been a bit easier for him to kind of close out. Yeah maybe he needs to shake things up a little bit for that Rotom maybe make it less of a support Pokemon and go really in on the offensive 
Um, and that's exactly what we get to see, Lee. We get to see that Dynamax Rose up here, maybe trading out the um, support type moves for something like a powerful Max Geyser just to stop the Colossal from getting itself into its stead. Particularly if you know you've got this Urshifu uh, right next to it, it looks like a really easy strategy here to be able to go for that side activation. You want to try and make sure that Colossal isn't going to be able to run to your team throughout the game. It's turn one, let's step up on the offensive. And you can see from Gabrielle's side of things as well, we're going to see that Gigantamax Colossal jump into the fray. Yeah, and as long as it gets the, the G-Max Volklith off this turn, then it's kind of... Giglet's almost done its job, you know. The, the, the more turns you get on the field with it is a bonus, really, but you want that residual damage because how he utilized the Zacian last game where it came in and kind of just put that instant pressure on everything and with the residual damage was enough to kind of clean up everything. The thing with Rotom is it resists Sassian's big steel attack, so it can match up pretty well against it. Um, but we're not going to see the, um, the, the Volklith here. We're going to see the Overgrowth after the weakness policy activation, but the Rotom taking that pretty comfortably. Yeah, it's able to take it, and there was no Max Flare, then there's no Sun in the sky to negate the water type attacks either that this Rotom can potentially throw out. Dragapult's gonna leave us, gonna go for a little Phantom Force, and it is indeed gonna be the Max Geyser coming out from this Rotom, going straight down into that Colossal, and easily is able to take it down. So that's a sigh of relief there for Chewie. It no longer has to deal with the Colossal, and Gabriel Agassi loses his Dynamax Pokemon very early on in this game too. Yeah, and without it really doing very much at all, you know, it's set up the grassy terrain, it's got a bit of damage onto the Rotom, but it's not really been very effective, not like we've known Colossal to be in the past, and that just shows how good an, an option Rotom Wash is against something like the, the Gigantamax Colossal here. Um, Chewie making a really great play here, not opting to kind of slow it down or use potentially support tools just going for that offense and going on the offensive here has really paid off from Zacian now coming onto the field but the Dragapult has slinked away Lou it is using <laughs> that Phantom Force so it is going to get a free attack this turn has to be wary of the potential Urshifu um, go, you know getting the attack off after this Surgeon Strike not going to be super effective though but the Zacian of course is always a threat when uh, whenever it pops up onto the field yeah, the Dragapult slinks back into the fray and is able to break the Focus Sash on that opposing Urshifu there. Bayonet Blade is going to come out from the Zashin, however. Goes into the Rotom, and although you said Rotom can take this relatively well, you can see it hanging on there. It still does a decent chunk and puts it potentially in range of something from this Urshifu. Of course, Rotom does have its berry, though. That's going to let it, using its wiki berry, regain some HP and let it be a little bit more comfortable. But Surging Strikes in the rain. Always a little bit of a worry, particularly with those guaranteed critical hits, but it actually targets it down into that Dragapult, maybe getting a little bit of revenge for the fact that it did the Phantom Force into it. Yeah, and now the Rotom free to get an attack off, and it'll be interesting to see where Chewie goes. If it's into this Zacian, which you can imagine the Max Geyser are coming out, rain boosted, is it going to be enough? Not Ooh. against this Zacian. We've already seen before how well trained defensively this, this Zacian is on Gabrielle's side of the field. Does a nice amount of damage and definitely puts it in a uh, closer range to be knocked out from something like another double up from the Rotom and the Dragapult. But the problem is uh, the Dragapult hasn't really got the attacks to, to go into the Zacian like single target without going for the Phantom Force. Yeah, exactly. And you can see the health kind of chipping away at these Pokemon as well. Urshifu looking relatively healthy, but it does have to worry about a potential kind of electric type move coming out from this Rotom as well, being the water type variant of Urshifu. It's not going to appreciate taking those moves at all. Dragapult as well, being the speedy thing that it is, can also slink off the field once again, go for another one of those Phantom Forces. So Urshifu just going straight for a detective, doesn't want to find itself the target of this Rotom. Dragapult actually going for the Dragon Darts here, so a good protect, not going to be able to find either mark on the opposing side of the field. And is then free to go for this behemoth at blade goes down into the rotom here Ooh, it rotom survive. looks like it's able to just hang on that's exactly what rotom needs to be able to go for another max geyser in the rain boosting up his water type attacks and find its mark down on that zashin and pick up a clean ko against it Wow, Rotom Wash has really shown its dominance and usefulness in this match for Chewie. Chewie piloting it really well, known comfortably there that it's going to be able to uh, take another Behemoth Blade after that initial one the last turn. And uh, the, the Dragapult Dragon Darts option there, because of the smart targeting that um, Dragon Darts has, because of the Fairy type and on Zacian, Dragapult kind of confident knowing that uh, if it targets into either one of those Pokemon, it's going to redirect into the Urshifu, hit it for double damage there and be enough to take it down. So not a threat to worry about for the Rotom, leaving it kind of open to take down that Zacian. 
Yeah, and Rotom's Dynamax turns will now end, so it's going to have to rely on being able to hit those critical um, Hydro Pumps potentially, but I think it's going to be more about those electric type moves. It's able to maybe do some good damage to both Salamence and Urshifu. They don't want to take those electric type moves at all, but Rotom being at such low HP and Urshifu able to capitalize on something like an Aqua Jet could be a little bit difficult here. Dragapult's just going to go straight for the Protect, though, playing defensively, and Chewie really does have all the utility with the Pokemon in the back, so even though Rotom is going to fall victim to this Aqua Jet, it does allow Chewie to bring in one of his two remaining Pokemon that are still yet to be revealed from the back. The dual wind beat as well, unable to find its mark thanks to the Protect. Yeah, the, the Dragapult Protect there, just nice, just biding Chewie's time to make sure that, you know, the Rotom was so low health. Uh, it was going to go down whatever hit at that turn. So just allowing something to come in for Chewy here and uh, be the thing that helps kind of clean up this match. And what better Pokemon to come in than the Zashin <laughs> in, in this situation? Getting that Intrepid Soul boost, and it's going to be able to deal with easily able to uh, deal with the Urshifu Old Salamence here on Gabrielle's side of the field. Exactly. Being able to keep that plus one attack boost as well. Salamence is already on the field. No switchability for Gabrielle. You don't have to worry about any Intimidates. And it really is Ashen's room here at the moment. Dragon Dart's going to come out though. Going to connect down onto that opposing Urshifu. One Dreepy followed up by the other one into that Salamence. Does a huge amount of damage thanks to the typing. And Ashen is able to go with the Behemoth Blade to follow up as well and try and pick up a solid KO here for Chewie. And just leave one remaining Pokemon for Gabrielle. But to no avail, Urshifu able to hang on. Wow, that's a big hang on there because you know that the, the, the Urshifu are really good on the defensive side of things as well, just showing that capability there. And obviously with this water typing as well, kind of resist the seal typing from the Zashian. So I'm going to be able to hang on. And now it gets a bit more difficult for Chewie to close this one up against two Pokemon, especially with these Surgeon Strikes in the rain that are going to do a lot of damage. Obviously these critical hits coming out every time. And you can see the damage just chipping mm. away at the Zashian, putting it right down here. And now the problem that Zashian has that it can only target one Pokemon at a time. You ignore the other one and the, 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 the opposite one will knock you out, unfortunately. Yeah, Zashin breathing a sigh of relief. The grassy terrain is actually still in effect, able to regain a little bit of HP, but won't be able to anymore. It leaves just as I mention it. And like you said there, Lee, the fact that Zashin can only target down one Pokemon does give Gabrielle the advantage now, maybe play a little bit more strategically, can go for some kind of protective measures. We know that's not something that Chewie has the luxury of being able to do when you're down against an Urshifu with its ability. Yeah, and that's a problem. And you know, the, the, the Venusaur coming onto the fields, really good for the for the Urshifu matchup but not so great against the the Salamence matchup now you can protect the Venusaur completely by just going for the Salamence but Gabriel could kind of read into that protect the Salamence here and then use the Urshifu to attack into the Zacian um you will obviously lose the uh, the Urshifu to the Venusaur but then you've got Salamence versus Venusaur as the end game with dual wing beats that could be a way for um for Gabriel to kind of close this matchup well, Urshifu going to go for the Detect. Zashin going for the Behemoth Blade, pulls it down onto that opposing Salamence. Really wants to make sure it's going to protect the Venusaur from taking any of those dual wing beats, and that's exactly what it's able to do. So Venusaur is going to be protected a little bit more going into this next turn. Goes for that Sludge Bomb, though, of course, not going to be able to find its mark thanks to the Protect. But Urshifu, again, in that same kind of precarious situation that we were saying about with Zashin, it can only really target one opposing Pokemon, and Chewie has two of those left on the field. Yeah, and the, 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 the way that Chewie's kind of preserved that Venusaur to the end game here and, and the Zacian as well has just like pushed them over the edge here, you know. It's made it too difficult for Gabriel to kind of come back in a situation where it looked like almost a kind of given that he was going to be able to close this one out. But um, all credit to Chewie here tying it up and, and um, taking the score to 1-1, meaning that Lou were going to be going into game three, which is excellent news for, for myself, I'm sure for you and for all our viewers <laughs> at home. Yeah, it's nice to be able to showcase as much action as we possibly can. Last game for these players. One of them is going to stay in the competition. One of them is going to be knocked out. So let's jump into game three and see with this really pivotal, important match, who is going to come out victorious on Chewy's side of the field. Rotom is back in action again with Dragapult. I don't see a reason to change that up. It worked phenomenally well in game two. And sticking to the same thing as well is Gabriel Agati with the Colossal and the Urshifu. 
Yeah, the, the same lead again. The Colossal obviously was in, in a little bit more of a difficult spot here, and it makes it a bit easier for Gabrielle to maybe think about switching it out here, uh, stalling out the Rotom max turns. If you've got something in the back that could come in, potentially take the max guys are a lot better, like the Salamence potentially. It's not a bad option here, but you've got to be wary as well because of the Dragapult support next to it. If you do see something like a Dragon Dart, you're not going to want Salamence to kind of come in on that, and then it really starts to kind of limit the options that you've got if you lose a Pokemon so early on in this game but um, the Rotom again making things very difficult for that Colossal to perform as well as what we've known it to in previous matches and you don't want a repeat of game two if you are Gabriel so it'll be interesting to see how he approaches at least this turn going into it. Yeah, a really nice play that Gabriel can make as well is if you think that the Rotom is going to Dynamax up, instead of trying to take damage, you can go for a Protect, and it's a really cheeky way to get a self-activation. Max Geyser will go through the Protect, it'll still do a little bit of damage, but critically it will activate the Steam Engine and the Weakness Policy, while Colossal takes relatively little damage, and it looks like that's possibly the strategy that Gabriel has gone for here. No Dynamax or Jack Antimax from his side of the field, just going to be going for the Protect. Dragapult going for those Dragon Darts, however, so going to be trying to break the Focus Sash once again on that opposing Urshifu. And the thing I love about this move is it will always redirect around to the most favorable position for the Dragapult, so both get to target down into that opposing Urshifu. Urshifu able to go for the close combat as well, dealing some good damage to the Rotom, but Rotom does go for that Max Geyser. Has Chewie fallen into Gabrielle's trap? Yes, he has. Yeah, and, and, and just like you said, Lou, getting that activation without going for the Aqua Jet, and it's not too dissimilar to what damage you would take from the Aqua Jet anyway, really. A uh, nice way to activate the weakness policy, get the steam engine, get set up with Colossal, and in a position where you can start you know, potentially going for a, a Gigantamax. Maybe this time, instead of the Overgrowth, you go for that G-Max Volcalith and, and get that residual damage kind of stacking on the field. The Urshifu in uh, not a bad position because it's not going to go down to Dragon Darts this next turn. You know, it won't be redirected, especially if the Colossal does attack. Um, but the, the Rotom probably going to be able to take at least an attack from mm. the Colossal here, you would imagine. Um, but probably not. An, uh, it depends. It depends if the, the, the Berry on the Rotom is activated mm. by the Colossal. If it is, and it probably is able to take an attack from the Urshifu as well, but it will be very close, very fine margins coming down to it, depending on what Gabrielle decides to go for here. And we need to consider how pivotal that close combat damage is as well. Um, you know, that could possibly put it in range. It's going to be between a couple of HP points to see how much this Volcalith is going to be able to do to that opposing Rotom, and maybe the close combat will be enough to put it in range. But like you said, Lee, we know that Rotom has the berry. If it is able to survive, it's going to be able to regain some HP, but Colossal is going for it here going for that G-Max Volcalith, but it's actually going straight down into the opposing Dragapult. So maybe Gabriel wanted to make sure that more damage can be done onto that Rotom before able to capitalize on going for a Volcalith, but it does leave Colossal incredibly exposed to something coming out from this Rotom in terms of the Max Geyser. Another close combat does come in, that certainly puts the Rotom in range of a KO, but has the Colossal left itself exposed to this Max Geyser lead? It has indeed, and it will be going down, but not after taking down the Dragapult and getting that residual damage activated on the field through the, the, the G-Max Volklith. And I think a really, really clever play here from Gabriel, because if you look mm. back to game one and how well uh, Chewie utilized his Dragapult and how disruptive it was to Gabriel's side of the field, I think getting rid of that Pokemon so early on kind of frees up things like Salamence to potentially come in and Zacian as well to come in and really not have to worry about taking, you know, uh, damage from the, and especially the Urshifu doesn't have to worry about the Dragapult anymore, which is a huge bonus. That is very true. The Dragapult was certainly disruptive in game two, and it's nice to offer Gabriel to try and get that KO on the board earlier here in this game three than was possible in that game two. Both the Zashans are here on the field though, so they are both the replacements for the Pokemon lost previously, and they're going to be able to get their Intrepid Sword boosts up as well. Urshifu is going to be able to benefit from the rain up, but so is Rotom, but Rotom looking up very precarious with his health stat at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, it's very close to actually getting the it's it's um, it's very activated. So you kind of want to make sure if you are hitting into that slot, you are knocking it out and not activating the, the berry because it just gives it that bit too much health probably for it to get a couple of more attacks off potentially against what's coming out on the field. Um, but we are seeing uh, the opposing Zacian on Chewy's side of the field <laughs> attack first, get that Behemoth Blade off into the Zacian on Gabrielle's and it's returning with the Behemoth Blade of its own and uh, trading blows back and forth these Zacians here. 
Yeah, big damage apiece on a Zashin, onto another Zashin. And the Urshifu now wants to do some damage of its own, going for these Surging Strikes to pick up the KO with, of course, that guaranteed critical hit. So Gabriel really trying to target down against the Zashin, wants to remove it from the field and picks up a KO in this next turn as well. Rotam, however, does a little spin of delight and goes for the Max Lightning, this time connecting down into that Urshifu and removes that Pokemon from play as well. I mean, with the close combats, the Urshifu had taken a lot of drops as well. Um, it gives Gabriel a nice opportunity to bring in his Pokemon from the back. But now both these trainers in a very dynamic game three are down to their last two remaining Pokemon. Yeah, and a really nice way to utilize the Urshifu in this game, Gabrielle. You know, utilizing it to get the damage onto the Rotom and not like making it the centerpiece of your, your attention the whole time. Concentrating on the things that are next to it, the big important things that are next to it. Like the Zacian there, getting the knockout there, leaving yourself with your own Zacian is huge. Also, the Dragapult being removed from the field. So you can guarantee that whatever you have, be it the Urshifu, be it the Salamence coming onto the field, you're not worrying about something else threatening you and outspeeding you pretty much every turn. Exactly, and the Umbreon coming in here for Chewy as well, it's going to be happy that that close combating Urshifu has left the field. It does allow it to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. However, the Salamence has come in into the frame. We saw how much damage the Salamence was able to deal out in game two. Yeah, um, and you know, the Salamence with the, the Life Orb item, they're going to be providing mm. a lot of power here. The Umbreon complicates things a little bit and definitely puts things in a little bit more favorable for Chewie, especially if it can take an attack from the Zashin, um, because it does have access to something like Yawn that could be very disruptive, um, and also foul play as well that you can you can utilize and hit the Salamence for good damage with, but it's all about what the Zashin kind of, how it approaches uh, this next turn and how you deal with the Umbrian really, because it is a Pokemon that you kind of need to concentrate um, pretty much both your powerhouses into at once. I like this play here from Gabrielle, just going defensively, scouting up what the opponent wants to do, and I think critically allowing one more turn of those residual effects as well to deal some good damage to the opposing Pokemon. Because every bit of free damage you can get here could allow you to have the Pokemon in range for either Salamence or the Zashin to be able to pick up a KO. Particularly against that Rotom now, anything that either of these Pokemon want to throw out are going to be able to pick up the KO against it, leaving Umbreon kind of the last Pokemon standing for Chewy. Yeah, and that's it. I think you like it shows the importance of the G Max Volcalith in making it sure even if you're only getting one turn off with your your G Max Colossal, that is the turn that you're getting because this residual damage, we've said it throughout today's broadcast, how important it is for these players to take advantage of this. And you can see here the Rotom potentially gonna be knocked out this next turn uh, from the residual damage and doing enough and a good amount of damage to that Umbreon as well. Yeah, Sacred Sword doing a huge chunk of damage, thankfully Umbreon has, it's buried to munch on and regain some HP, but unless it's able to do something drastic in this particular turn, it's going to have to take another one of those in the next turn. Outrage connects though onto the Rotom, removing it from play, and this leaves the, the Umbreon really, really exposed. We know it can't protect or anything like that as well, so with two Pokemon on Gabriella Garty's side of the field, both outspeeding that Umbreon as well, even though the Zashin has gone down, we know that the outrage coming out from the Salamence on this next turn to an Umbreon that is unable to prevent itself from being attacked could be exactly what Gabriel Agati needs to close out the set. Yeah, you would imagine so. The outrage going to be definitely more than enough damage <laughs> to pick up the knockout onto the Umbreon. And it's a nice option as well, you know, when you're in situations like this, it's the most powerful of dragon type attacks that you can really utilize with something like Salamence. So, you know, it does pick a random target. So sometimes it is a little bit risky, but in situations like this, you're like, well, it doesn't really matter at all because I've got the backing of that G Max Volklet res residual damage to kind of help me pick up knockouts where I'm not hitting into. And uh, as we see, Gabrielle in style with the Salamence, take the knockout on the Umbrian and take the set to one new. Absolutely phenomenal play there and huge congratulations to Gabriela Garty who is of course going to continue in on the competition. Commiserations to Chewie, they certainly gave us a phenomenal